I mean, we've been trying to make this case for a long time, right? That going to the gym to practice versus always going in there to to work out or exercise. I think that we're trying to shift people's mindset. I think for the long for the longest time, uh, health and fitness people are always pushing the the, the motivation yeah. part of workouts. You know, to go crush it and beast mode and you're 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 gauging your workouts based off of how much you sweat or how tar how tired you are or how sore you are the next day and you know trying to get people away from that conversation and more into the well, form and great technique point. And practicing. That's the number that's the factor everybody thinks is the most important is intensity. Yeah. In fact, uh they people readily trade intensity for technique because they think it's the intensity that's the most valuable thing. Hey, real quick, here's the giveaway. The RGB bundle, MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, MAPS Aesthetic, free to one of you lucky listeners and viewers. You just got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel and click on notifications. If we like your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get all three programs absolutely free. Also, big sale this month, MAPS Prime, MAPS Prime Pro, MAPS Anywhere, all combined in a new bundle for $99.99. Huge discount that would normally retail for $361. So it's a huge, huge discount. Go check it out. Head over to mapsapril.com. All right, here comes the rest of the show. The most important factor by far when it comes to your exercises is form and technique. Without it, your workouts are far less effective and way more dangerous. So focus on your form and technique above all. That's a strong statement to say mm. most important. Yeah, because well, think about it, right? Think about um, think about all the exercises that someone can do, and think about someone doing them terribly. Yeah, it's it, your reps, your sets, your intensity doesn't matter at that point because it's way less effective, and you've made them so much more dangerous. And this really came to me because I'm working out in a commercial gym these days. I haven't worked out in a commercial gym for you a long time. You must be seeing a lot of uh, wild form out there. I do. I see a lot of, and I, I'm watching people go hard or go easy, but the technique and the form is so bad. I'm like, I know you're doing squats, but you're not doing squats. What you're doing is you're set. You're going to hurt yourself at some point. Um, or, you know, I see you doing rows, but you're making your posture worse with the way that you're doing them type of deal. So, and as trainers and coaches, I would say, I mean, there's a lot of things that we coach and train on, but I would say that's probably the thing you you really focus on the most from a I guess a me mechanistic standpoint. Yeah. Well, right? I used to argue this quite a bit, just mainly for what are you building upon? Like what what what's going to carry you further into um, you know years down the road, and or am I going to have to go back and and undo everything that I was working towards because my form was so off and I was building all these bad patterns that I was going to carry with me. Yeah. So is it really worth? Um, losing weight and, and doing things immediately right now without really paying attention to form technique, I would have to say that, uh, you know, you can make a definite case that it's, Oh, I think it's, I think it's a hundred percent correct. At least for compound lifts and, and, and mo complex movements, hard to make that case. I think for machines. bicep curls, machines, things like that, that are uh, single joint movements, yeah. that there's not a lot of risk involved. It, and, does, it does make them less effective though, right? Oh, if, I mean, it does make them more risky, is my point. Maybe not super risky, but it's just more risky than they need to be, even though they're very safe exercises. No, no, I, but I mean, the statement is most important, right? The factor, I, I don't yeah. know if that would be the most important factor for those types of movements. I definitely see that with a, uh, a barbell complex movement for sure, because there's so much risk involved. And to your point, Justin, you're laying this foundation and if you bad patterns, if you create those, then everything else going forward is going to be yeah. terrible. It's afterwards. just, it's, yeah. I would say that, you know, obviously compound lifts require more attention to form and technique, but man, have you guys seen a barbell curl done with terrible technique or a, a lateral, uh, you know, done with terrible technique? Oh yeah. The arching back and oh man. Yeah. It's it, ugly. it just, it's not even the same exercise. You know, what makes exercises good at what they're designed to do is the form and technique. So I don't care what exercise you, you pick. It could be a abduction machine, right? Which has a little bit of value, mainly maybe for correcting imbalances. If you do it wrong, it, there's, where's the value? It's gone now, right? All exercises are like that. Like, like we talk a lot about like squats are so effective for the lower body. Do them wrong. Are you really doing the squats anymore? Are, are you really deriving any value? Um, and then a lot of these lifts, to your point, Adam, especially the compound lifts, 
they'll get a bad rap because people do them wrong. And so I'm sure you guys have seen this where you'll do a deadlift and someone will come up and be like, you shouldn't do that. Yeah. I hurt my back doing deadlifts or I hurt my knees well, doing squats. We make the argument sometimes for uh, exercises like the Jefferson curl, for instance, but there are certain people that have proper form technique and strength in that range of motion to pull it off. Yeah. Uh, but that's everything. It's, it's the technique, it's the strength, it's the control um, that really determines whether or not it's a valuable exercise for you. Yeah. It just, it's like if you, if you lack, of course there's ex obviously I'm, I'm being very black and white. Of course there's a, a spectrum here. Your form can be off a little bit. That's going to be different than if it's off a lot. But if you, if you're doing a workout and your form is off on every exercise that you're doing you're, and you're not really focusing on the technique and you continue to work out, you might not get hurt for a year or two years or three, and then you start to get these overuse kind of injuries and then you can't do those movements anymore. Um, and that becomes a big problem. And then if you're one of those really consistent discipline people, who's like, no matter what I'm working out, no matter what, then you run into this, which I used to see all the time in the gym, which was the, the guy or girl who's been working out for 10 years and they're like, yeah, I can't bench anymore. Yeah. I don't do overhead presses anymore. And it's like they remove all these really effective exercises because they've developed these overuse injuries, which come from, you know, poor technique and form. So, um, and that's, especially with strength training, it's like you, you, technique and form is what makes those exercises uh, so valuable. And so like, you know, even with low intensity, if you just practice the exercise and practice te technique, you, you'll get great results versus, you know, terrible techniques. I just want to make that point, you know? Yeah, no, I think that it, people, I mean, we've been trying to make this case for a long time, right? That going to the gym to practice versus always going in there to, to work out or exercise. I think that we're, trying to shift people's mindset. I think for the long, for the longest time, uh, health and fitness people are always pushing the, the, the motivation yeah. part of workouts, you know, to go crush it and beast mode. And you're, you're, you're gauging your workouts based off of how much you sweat or how tar how tired you are or how sore you are the next day. And, you know, trying to get people away from that conversation and more into the well, form and great technique point. And practicing. That's the number. That's the factor. Everybody thinks is the most important is intensity. Yeah. In fact, uh, they people readily trade intensity for technique because they think it's the intensity that's the most valuable thing. So they go off. I, there was a, a class I was watching the other morning again at the gym, and I, I want to keep talking about it because they're good people there. Okay, I don't want to say anything negative. They're actually better than most gyms, but there was a class, a strength training class going on. And one of the reasons we've talked about why we don't like classes so much is it's it's almost impossible to be really specific and watch technique when you got thirty people. But you're watching the people and their form is going out the window because they're all chasing intensity. Yeah. And they're they're and they're trading it happily because people have no idea that the intensity is not nearly as valuable as the former technique. So again, I'm watching, I'm just like, oh my gosh. Everybody's you know, speaking of classes, did you guys see uh OTF that rolled out the Steve Aoki thing? What's that? So they have hired his his executive title is uh like chief a music officer. CMO. No. Yeah. So he's like a famous DJ, right? That spins a lot in like, you know, Vegas. Steve I mean, no, I'm just he, trying to like, I don't think he did, the, he, did he did the comic book with Tom. Yeah. you? Yeah, most people should go. It has to know who Steve. Yeah. Aoki is, he's right? one of the most famous uh, for like sure. DJs one of the most and, famous. Mm -hmm. And so they hired him. I believe that's the right title. Maybe Doug can fact check me. I think it's CMO and I think it stands for chief music officer or something. And I believe that, which is, I, I think this is really clever and super smart, very smart. Um, I don't think it's going to improve the workouts by any mean, but I think that I love that they're doubling and tripling down on the experience aspect of the business. Mm -hmm. Although as, as a trainer, I would like to critique and say, oh, better workouts. Yeah, and yeah, that's, yeah. but at the end of the day, it's a business. That's what they're trying to do is scale this thing. And I think that you know, playing right into that and like, check this out. Our music is customly made oh, that's gonna by be, Steve Aoki. That is smart. I that think makes that's a lot of sense. pretty cool, right? Yeah. Is that what it says, Doug? Was I right? Yeah, chief music officer. Yeah. Well, do you guys do you guys remember- <laughs> See what he got paid if you can. <clears throat> do you guys remember, it might've been Crunch at one point, but there was a gym chain that was famous for the classes and they were always packed, but it was because of stuff like this. Like there'd be like live- like reggae or there'd be a DJ spinning in the class or there'd be 
like some kind of different cycling classes were, yeah. were notorious for that. Yeah. Having like crazy music going at the same time. Oh, super people, intense. People, I mean, as a selling point, people love it. I yeah. think this is a, I think this is a really smart move because if people go in there and listen to music that's special to OTF, that'd be right. great. Right. I just need a laser light show. Well, I wonder it. too, if they're going to get him, you know, and I wonder if this, so early on, so we, we, I, I worked at one of the, one of the first ones on the West coast, right? Florida was really big first. Um, I, I doubt we were the first ones to do this. Um, we definitely were the first ones in the West Coast and in our area that did this. I'm sure somebody in the East Coast did this. But we used to have a, a live DJ come in. So I think it was on every other Friday or something like that. I bet those we, were packed, those classes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, see? people just, it just brings a different energy in there. You know what I'm saying? So it's exciting. And classes are all about energy. Yeah, yeah, and you feel like you're in a nightclub. And you, I mean, and you actually feel the speakers because the DJ comes in with all their stuff. I used so. to have DJs come into the gym when we would do closeouts. Yeah. And I would get some complaints. The older members didn't like it because it was loud as <laughs> shit. But I would always sell more memberships. Old people so. don't like music in general. They're just yeah. like, no, yeah. <laughs> yes. too loud. Exactly. It's very, it's very uh, processed food-esque, though, to me. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, like cheap. focusing on the, the, the crunch, the smell, and the taste of the workout Rather versus the action. Yeah. Versus totally. the, versus the effectiveness of the workout, what we're going to do. But so again, I'm, I'm commending them on the business side, less of a fan on the programming than that, that side of it. Cause I still think that they have I'm the sure same. their signups will increase. Oh yeah. Because no, cause that that's, that's a big selling point. Uh, it's funny cause I always had this idea of like having like a crazy dungeon kind of gym that like had live metal. Oh, you know, like a live band. Wow, there. dude. <laughs> Can you imagine how crazy I'd be hitting PRs all day? Oh, I'd hurt myself in a gym like that. That would be dangerous. <laughs> ah! That would be a dangerous you know? workout. That'd be awesome. Yeah. No, I, I, I have to, t I literally tailor my music based off of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And if I, if I'm like calories are low and I'm trying to get leaner and I'm not gonna be as strong and I got to go get a pump. It's like, I'm not putting metal on because the workout no, will yeah. change right away. Yeah. You definitely have to, to do the, in the right setting. Yeah. For sure. I wonder if he'll actually show up and drop in. I, I don't know if that's part of his contract or what, but it'd be really cool to see if he like will tour around and drop into the places. Well, didn't Madonna do yeah. that with her hard candy gyms? So you remember oh, Hard Candy? Right. I forgot. Yeah, about that. she was part of that. Does she still Did own she, those? I don't know if she didn't still, that. Didn't he? Didn't she partner with Mastroff? Uh -huh. um, I want to say so. I know that uh, Apple was was running some of them. In fact, I got invited to the Hard Candy one in Rome. I guess it's across the street from the Coliseum. But these gyms were like that: live classes and dance, you know. And she would actually show up. I don't know if they're doing this anymore. This is when they first started. She would show up just as publicity things, right? Yeah. Sure. Teach. Class. Speaking of which, did you see her TikTok? Everybody's oh, talking about. Showed me just she does not look the same, dude. Why, why is everyone talking about it? Because it doesn't look like her anymore. She's uh, had so much surgery. work on her face. Uh, yeah. yeah, definitely. She's gotten so far to where it's like unrecognizable. Dude, it's bad when you're a celebrity like that. I feel bad because is there a name for that? Well, you were weird. We talk about this all the time about how these celebrities that become famous and they're they're famous for the way they look and stuff. So it's really common with actors and actresses. And is there is there is there, is, there, is that a syndrome or is there a, a term? Yeah. For for that, or like that an happens? addiction to uh, plastic surgery in general, it's just be a term it, for it's that. just when you're when you're loved and valued for your image, aging has got to be the worst possible thing that could happen to you because you're not going to look the same. Yeah, you're getting older. You want to stay relevant. So, I mean, I feel for people like that because I can't imagine what that would feel like. Now, where, yeah. where where are you guys at? Like, what I mean, obviously, our our wives all take care of themselves. They're they're fit and in good shape. But at one point, they'll be 65, 70 years old. Yeah. Also. Um, where if, and if the wives came up to you and wanted to get stuff done, where do you stand on that? Like, how would you have that conversation? Mm, God, I mean, look, it would uh, depend. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it depends. And I think it would depend on what, what it is. Yeah. Like what the procedure is. So are there like certain, how big? Are there yeah. certain? <laughs> <laughs> no. It's, That's all no. I'm saying. Just you know what? Approved. I, yeah. approved. I think we, it's, the, it's, it's got to, it How much money were we talking you about? You know what? It's the, it's what causes someone to want to go far. That's the real thing. Like if you're, if you're feeling really bad about yourself and insecure and it's like anything, right? It can turn into this thing where you're trying to fix yourself all the time. Yeah. At some point you have to accept that. Entropy happens, right? You have yeah. to accept that you age and that, uh, you know, that's the deal. I get like hormone therapy. If it's monitored, that's, <clears throat> you know, that's fine. Yeah, that, tell her. I mean, some, a bit of Botox. I think it's, it's the wrinkle stuff that, you know, like I know I've talked to Courtney a bit. It's just that kind of stuff like kind of comes in. I don't have a problem. So I'm I, I, like, I'm on, I, I'm on both kind of sides stuff. of this, right? Because yeah. I, I've seen, 
I've seen the abuse of it. I've seen someone go down, like they they start with something very basic like Botox and then it just gets escalates, right? Yeah. But then I've also seen conditions where you have someone who's, and I won't, I have family, right? That this, they've done this and they're uh, north of 60 years old. And after I saw the surgery, one, it was so subtle that most people would know. I know because I see her all, all the time. Um, but I also noticed... Uh, how it impacted her life afterwards. Like mm -hmm. she be, she was going out more and she seemed yeah. to be happier. Yeah. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, well, it, it, I know it's superficial. I know like it, it, for the for people that don't do it and aren't fans of it, there's that initial like, oh, why would you do that yeah. and be kind of judgy about it. But then there's the other side where I've seen someone do that before and it kind of turn around their... Yeah their life well, I, positively. So it's kind of, yeah, I feel like there's ways of like, like the subtle ones, I think too, where it's like, it's, you know, it's not an addiction to it. Like, I think there's a difference when you see somebody that has yeah. had like everything, you know, versus like just some subtle things to just kind of slow down the aging. Yeah, process but let's be honest, it, but the, 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 what's considered, you know, excessive uh, changes right. all the time. That's right. Like, okay. If we went back a right. hundred years, so we go back to the early 1900s, uh, 1920s, uh, breast implants would have been weird, right? People are like, what the hell? Coloring your hair 150 okay. years ago would have been weird, right? I'm so glad we're bringing this up because I was in Bakersfield, dude. And <laughs> what? Dude, there was like poster boards everywhere for like butt lifts and, and, what? and boob jobs. And like, I was like, wow, I didn't know this was such a plastic surgery place to go, you know, like at Bakersfield, <laughs> you know, really holding it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I saw like in a couple of the, um, coffee shops, there was like lady that visibly had, you know, regular legs. And then just this, this, you just slapped his butt on there. Wow. Like, it was just totally obvious. Well, how far is that from, um, What's the what's the town south that's like the yeah most Beverly Hills LA kind of no 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 not Beverly Hills no the uh the famous porn city what what oh, oh San Fernando Valley yes I don't know why I know that so Justin <laughs> Justin so quick on that one <laughs> it's, it's, no hesitation we'll take a little detour yeah. <laughs> no how far is San Fernando Valley from Bakersfield area it's not too far is it probably oh close, so right? maybe that's what they're yeah that's my theory is that Bakersfield is one of the kind of cheaper places to live from the San Fernando and L A area so I'm wondering yeah. if like that's why you see so much of that that's it's like, smart it's you like, like you work and do your plastic sir you live and you do your plastic surgery yeah. in bakersfield and you commute over to san fernando it's so funny because there's some big houses we drove by but then there's just like all these like oil rigs and barbed wire and like uh look like people selling crack what is uh, it doug it's like 91 miles okay so it's somewhat close it's like people who, who started selling shovels with the gold rush oh there's a huge demand here guys let's open up a shovel store you know? yeah well, I've seen that I've seen that more now than I ever have too. Like when when just when uh, we were younger, obviously breast implants was a was already becoming popular. But I didn't know anybody who had butt implants. I've seen more of those in the last like ten years. That's a I hard haven't. one to. to that's just, a really hard one to do because it's a muscle. Yeah. Maybe to the average person, they can't tell. I'm a trainer. I can. It, I mean, you have to have built hamstrings to make yes. that work. Otherwise, it's like nothing, and then butt. Uh, all of a sudden, well, you can normally something. tell fake boobs though too, right? Not always. Plus boobs, but you know what? No. Boobs aren't muscle. So be, I think I'm maybe a little biased because I'm a trainer. No, I'm I'm coming on your point. Your point is that you could tell the difference. And I'm like, well, <laughs> how often do you see well, fake boobs? Well, I, I think to, to be difference. more specific, I think because yeah, I'm a, I mean, I'm a trainer, kind of if, if, if it, anything that has to do with a muscle, because I know you could build it, Maybe it, like because I build muscle for and that's what I do for a living. Well, no, so, I get right? it. If someone has huge glutes, difference. what comes with huge glutes is hamstrings, developed hamstrings, because yeah. you're working that backside and just yeah, it complements it. It's, it's going like to your and if, if you build a, a really big strong butt, the hamstrings are going to come up with it. Yeah. yeah, that's just part of yeah. it. Yeah. So when you see like those like absolutely no definition in hamstrings at all, which tells me they haven't done a single squat in their life. And then diaper butt. And yeah. then this huge butt. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, no, I get, I I mean, get that. I mean, their own. Uh, you yeah, know, it's your body. where I'm at. But, but it'd, be, yeah. it'd be like getting bicep implants but having no triceps. You know what I mean? Be like just this big bicep in the front. Yeah. Everybody would know. I'm sure well, somebody's at least all the trainers it, would know. You know. So what, what else did you do down there? You guys were... We were there for the kids' gymnastics oh, tournament, okay. and so we kind of made a weekend out of it because... We messed up. Place to go it was great. It was scenic. We, went to, <laughs> you know, went to the uh, sites. I loved your picture you took. Too. 
<laughs> that was to, right outside. Instantly offended. You know what was great was you did oh, that, I and then like so even somebody who lived there was just like, yeah. uh, I wanted to defend it, but I couldn't think of any way to do it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, you guys like produced Corn, the band, so that's something. Oh, did they? Yeah, oh, they came out of came Bakersfield. Out of that's legit. <laughs> yeah, They're yeah. good, man. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was like right outside my hotel, dude. It was gnarly. <laughs> yeah, just to say the least. Uh, it was not a whole lot of uh, you know great things going not on. Not a lot of five star hotels there. Yeah, not a whole lot. I mean, we we drove back and and tried to make a trip out of it and went to like San Luis Obispo. And so we're on this hunt to like find a lot of items for the house. And there's this really cool like furniture store and we bought this like mirror. And then we bought this other piece that was uh, like a nine foot piece of wood that was um, somebody had, had carved um, these, these two like bowls in it. And um, apparently it was like some tribe in India uh, and it was part of, they're like warding off evil spirits or whatever. And it's like okay. kind of their thing. They had this whole backstory behind it. It was like 300 years old. And I was like, Oh dude, this thing is cool. You know, and we're all stoked on it. We shove it in the car with us, like right in between all of us. And we're driving all the way home, like three hours with this big old fucking wood, like, yeah. like smashing into us the whole way home. We get home. And there's a made in China tag. Yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> it's worse than that. Yeah. No, no way it's worse than no, that. No, no, no. It's not like, That would be the worst thing ever. No, dude. this was expensive too. It was like, it was like a total conversation piece. And I'm like, oh, cool. Cause we got all these blank walls and stuff yeah. in my house. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Lame. So I bring it inside and um, I put it against the wall. I wanted it to be near the door. I'm like, this looks cool here. And so I didn't think anything of it. And we're just kind of walking around. And then right before I'm going to bed, Courtney's like, you know, the boys kind of came up to me and they're like, you know, we're, we're scared. We're oh. scared of this, this, this item that you brought in the house. And I was like, what? You're scared. What do you mean? So I just, I turned the lights on. I go over there. And that was just like messing with my head. I'm like, why are they scared of this? <laughs> I'm looking at it and it's like, it's these two so it's bulls, but they look like just demons. Like, like when you start looking at it without all the distraction of things in, in a different setting and it's just by itself, it was like, you're walking past it and it's just like this, <laughs> this old ancient evil fucking relic. I just put in my house. <laughs> you brought into your ghost house? Into my ghost house <laughs> that has already tried to set itself on fire and flood itself. What are you trying to do? I don't know. It's attracting. I, I don't like know. That. I was like, why did I bring this in my house? And I put it outside my house for the night and I'm, I'm like now I have to fucking sell it. No, you don't. Yes, dude, I can't have it in my house. Oh. And I didn't even realize. Like I was like, how you did I not see this? There with this? Yes, I drove all the way with it, like banging. Hold on, would it look cool in here somewhere? I don't know. You know, I sent uh, Doug a picture of it. If you guys want to check it yeah, out, yeah, let me see what it dude, looks like. But I mean, it's super cool. But it was like, dude, this thing is. How much you pay for this? It's fucking got thing? a little bit of evil vibes to it, dude. Hundreds, or did you break a thousand on this? You didn't spend a thousand dollars on it. Oh dude. yeah, that's for sure I did, dude. It's oh, three hundred years old, bro. You're talking yeah. about this? It's three hundred years old. Yeah, dude. I this, this thing. Let's see. Yeah. No, no, not that. Oh, thing. that's oh, cool. Oh. No, no, no. I, I don't like know that. what that is. No, I texted to you. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Here we are. Yeah. Uh, no, it's it's a plank of wood. So you have a your house is haunted. We've already established it's three hundred years old, and it's you from brought a in tribe some, somewhere else, and you brought in some cursed yes. sculptures. Yes, so you're trying to cross. I the watch too many trying? shows where like somebody brings in this old piano that like demons come out yeah. and they fuck with you. Or yeah. hey, remember the Brady Bunch when they brought back the the, the lava rock? Oh uh, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> for Hawaii. They're, yeah. yeah, it's probably fine, but it's just it got in my head that the kids were scared of it. You know, yeah, I think yeah. that's what really like started messing kids with see me. spirits, yeah. bro. Are you uh, having technical difficulties over there? Of course, there? of course. <laughs> Well, you, you know, know, we can see it later. Hey, you know, before you, as he's trying to work on that, we have to talk about one of the most gangster moves ever that someone did, Elon Musk. What are you doing? Oh, Gang, yes. you can't believe you don't know. You hear this? No. Oh, oh my God. Yes, I thought for sure. No wonder no. you weren't talking about it. Yeah. No, no. What'd okay, you, so remember how Elon did that that poll about- If um, you were to start his own social media Yes, and okay. And okay, you know what he, he just did, did? He did something? No, no, no. He did something that's so gangster, it's amazing. He bought- 9.2% of Twitter. He is the largest shell shareholder now of Twitter. The largest. Just for, for reference, Jack Dorsey, who founded it, owns 2%. Yeah. So Elon Musk now is- A majority shareholder. He now owns more sh shares than any single person of Twitter. He has now serious influence and power. And by the way- Wow. It's just by the way- Interesting. He bought that many shares, right? I don't know how many billions of dollars or whatever he bought. It's just a shit ton of shares. 
immediately Twitter exploded. He's already made $750 million as of right now. Oh, if you wow. go on and look at the co- the whatever, he's already made $750 million off of his, <laughs> his investment. <bro. laughs> wow. Now, he were is, his shareholders excited about him coming in? or They like, can't say they shit. Say, okay. They can't say anything. I was going to say, because this is so now definitely he's, shaking he's, it up. Let's talk about this, right? Because he, he one thing that he tweeted that got a lot of controversy was he said, do you think that the algorithm that Twitter operates off of should be uh, open source? Because there's all this this controversy, right? Are they censoring these people? Why isn't it fair with these people over there? You kick this guy off. You don't kick that guy off. We have the you know the the the, the people you know running the country of Iran who obviously support terror. They're still on there, but you know the, our ex president is off there and whatever. There's all this this controversy. He said we I want we need an algorithm that's that's open so people know what's going on. I, I'm very interested to see what kind of influence he wow. has. Wow! Now, th- did this come? Uh, I, I, they had to have gone crazy. The press has got to be all over That's this. What, did, he, did he yeah. talk about it? I mean, did he come out and yeah. say his intentions? He or? hasn't said anything. No, so far. not yet. That was just the big. I think it's pretty so clear what his, int- what his intentions are yeah. based off of how he's, you know, what he's always said. I got to look at the shares right now. Well, I, of idea. course, you're going to see from the conservative side, people will be like, "Yeah, bring Trump back on." You know, I don't, like. I don't know how much power you have at nine percent. Still, you're not a ma- you're you may, you're not the CEO. You yeah, know? and you don't even have majority, right? So you have you're the the largest holder. So you do yes. you can manipulate stock, right? So you could be a dick and and sell off when they're already crashing, and then that would hurt them really bad. So you do have some yes. power. I'm sure it comes with a board seat with that much money. I think it. I think one of the biggest simple things that I can think of is they can't kick him off or censor him. Because there's always been a little bit of a threat because he pushes it a little bit. Why? Why couldn't he? Because he owns nine. What if he what, what if he retaliates? Cool. I'll dump all the stock. Boom. You guys all tank. You know? It's very interesting. And I'm not sure what the shareholder meetings would look like. Obviously, he's not the he doesn't own a majority in the sense that he has that that kind of power. Right. But a single person owning that many shares would mean I don't know how many other shareholders would have to come together to override him. Is my point. He owns so much because it doesn't sound like it's a lot. The but it's a lot. It would just be the the board. The board would have to. I don't know how many people are on the board, and and even if he has a seat on the board, he would have ma- majority vote. Uh, he would have to have majority of vote to really impact any real structural change. He's definitely to the, in the meetings now to the company. You yeah, like, what the, that's what I'm saying. He's on the board. Maybe yeah is what I would assume that he is. But bro, the guy, it, it's like just a foot. That he got in, right? Like, I don't know exactly, like, where that's going to go. Bottom line, it's interesting yeah. as shit. Like, it's yeah. interesting that he's made a play like that. You know, you wonder what he's And what that's he's after he tweeted, you know, I'm thinking about starting my own, basically, essentially, starting my own social media platform. Wow. I mean, that's wild. If you yeah, think about the, this it. came out. I didn't even see this. This just yeah. happened. Yeah, wow. Just, I mean, Twitter. I mean, exploded. Their, their share, their share price exploded right afterwards. Wow. And and again, if you if you see how much he invested. After he bought it, the rising stock, he's already made you know, $750 million. I just million. love all the moves he's made. Hey, love or hate him, you you have to at least appreciate watching him. Dude, he's- yeah, dude. I mean, you got to appreciate that. You know that. why I like the guy? I don't know him, so I don't know if he's a good guy, bad guy, or whatever. He's gangster as hell, though, because he puts his money where his mouth is all the exactly. time. Exactly. They talk crap about him not paying taxes. He pays more taxes than anybody. Then he donates he billions of dollars billions of charity. Billions of dollars of charity. Now, pa- how are you going to talk trash Part of that? it, Kay- so you know, we're once we're all done, oh, here, the smelling his farts, I right? Know. Oh, there's is this your picture? Oh yeah, now you can see it. Yeah, oh, yeah my computer bad. did not like this thing. Oh, oh see, see, it see it's, it's definitely possessed. got some evil spirits oh. or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but like at you know, first glance, it looks cool because it's just like bulls. But um, I don't know what it was like in, in the certain lighting in my house and in by the, itself uh, without cool anything the, else. The Chucky studio. Yeah, like it's it's. It's cool. It's like a totem kind of pole yeah, looking. Yeah. I, first, I want to I want to like see what it. I was really to, stoked on it, and then what it was it means. Like, I'm scared. Not, I'm not about to put that somewhere if it means something. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you that's my saying? point. Is I don't have a whole lot of like um, a protective type of symbolism in my house yet, yeah. so it's like I don't know if Let's I want to add cross that. up and be done with it. Yeah. There you go. Well, I'm just gonna get a priest <laughs> in to do a little thing. You know, yeah. back back to you guys smelling his farts is uh, you know, Elon. Uh, is one of the <laughs> the better CEOs out there, especially the, when we talk about the the billionaire CEOs. Um, as far as um, talking to the press and 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 doing a good job of promoting himself, so you have to remember that as you guys he's talk a good, he's a good about face how of, of uh, his 
brand. Yeah, company. he's not afraid. Well, they didn't to, say that when he smoked he, a joint. He does Rogan, interviews. Though. He tweets. Yeah. He does all this stuff all the time. Like he's he's also brilliant in the way of self promoting. Totally. So part of our allure to him and stuff like that is he does that better than many. There's, there might be somebody who's a, a, a badass billionaire or hundred millionaire that you like even more, but you don't know it because he's not self-promoting the oh, way sure. Elon it's, does. But you know what? It's not even so much that for me, because remember how much criticism he got for smoking a joint on Rogan? Remember mm -hmm. Tesla shares, crap, they went down like like 4%, 5%, something like that? Yeah. It's not even that. I don't really care about that that much. He's kind of weird when he talks. He's obviously a very smart dude. I think he's even said on Saturday Night Live that he's, uh, what is he, high-functioning autistic. So he's not like super smooth when he communicates. Yeah. He just puts his money where his mouth is. That's it. He talks shit about Twitter. What does he's, he do? He's all action. Yeah. What does he do? Billions of dollars here. Now I own 9.2 something, you know, percent. Like that's putting your money where your mouth is. That's the part that I, because I don't know if I would do that with that, with, with that many billions of dollars. Like that's a big risk. The opposite could have happened. He could have bought it and people could have sold their shit and he could have lost yeah, well, he's, tons of money. Um, no doubt he's playing 3D chess for sure. But you know what? Speaking of billionaires, oh my God, especially Justin and Doug, you guys will appreciate it because I know how much you guys like billions and what a shit show that's become, right? Terrible season. So unfortunate. Yeah. There's not a lot of... So, you know, we had that conversation. This was on Friday. The three of us were talking and we're all disappointed in like the you know trajectory of billions and stuff. Yeah. So I was on a hunt for like... Because I made that comment, like, but what other billionaire shows are? There's not like other cool billionaire shows that I can watch other than Succession and that. Like, what else is there? Yeah. So, you know what show I found that I'm like going down the rabbit hole right now? Undercover Billionaire. Grant uh, Cardone was on it. Is this like Undercover Boss? Is it the same? Yeah, because I've seen Undercover Boss. So, it's a reality show like that, but n n the premise is nothing like that. Oh. So, Undercover Boss, they- Oh, you go, texted us about this. So, this yeah, yeah, thing- yeah, yeah. Okay. So- and, I, and now I, I like Grant Cardone even more. I kind of liked the guy before, but I didn't know him very well after watching him do this. And I guarantee you, once you guys watch it, you'll have similar feelings. I'm not all the way through. I haven't seen the finish of it, but I, it's got me sucked in. So check this out. So the, the premise of the show, I went right to, so by the way, I went to you know, disclaimer. I went right to season two because I really, the way I got hooked in was I was curious about Grant Cardone's episode. I wanted to see mm -hmm. his episode. His episode is in season two. So I started at season two. The show is about three three other billionaires, Grant Cardone being one of them, so two other ones. And they they tell them, they, they, they strip them of all their money, their name, they have to change their appearance. They get a cell phone with no, con, no contacts in it and $100 in their pocket. They drop them in a random city that they don't tell them about in like literally bumfuck Egypt type of towns in the middle, everywhere in the country, the three, three different places. And then they have 90 days to build a million dollar business. Oh, wow. Fucking cool. What? Well, now are they? Do they I mean, Fucking is this a spoiler cool. alert? Do they? Do they actually do it? So I know they do because I looked ahead, but I haven't seen it unfold and happen. Supposedly, Grant builds a five point five million dollar business. Annoying. These are real companies that like yes, then, and with a hundred bucks. So the best what? part of the show so already. I bought some cra some cocaine. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I chopped immediately. It. I'm going to drugs. Yeah, <laughs> they, they can't. They cannot use their likeness. So even when they're having conversation with these people, they have to pretend they're somebody they else. They can't use anything that they. they had. Yeah, they have no leverage, zero wow. leverage at all, and no power with money. They have a hundred dollars to their That's name. Fantastic. Fantastic. And the, and they give them this beat up truck. So they they, they they each have like a beat up vehicle that's worth maybe two grand, and a hundred dollars to their name. And and they got to pay for food and a place to live and stay. So they all got to get jobs right out the get. They got to find a place to live for super cheap since they own. It is cool. That sounds so hard. And what it, it is, yeah, it's it crazy. Seems, it seems crazy hard. And the thing that I'm most impressed with is all three of these CEOs are like totally different people. But you start to see some characteristics that mm -hmm. I wish the show actually elaborated or highlighted a like little more. Like commonalities? Yes, that people need to understand. Yeah. Like, you got these 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 billionaires that, and, and, and I know a lot of times, like, billionaires, they get this, you know, pretentious and they're assholes. You know, these guys are fucking the you don't furthest. just get there by accident. That's right. And you watch the way they interact with strangers and people and the way they build relationships and how... Every every bit of communication is they're always thinking two, three steps ahead on relationships and and building those first. The money will come. They all say kind of the same thing. Like, I have no idea what I'm gonna build. I have no idea the opportunities. My and they all kind of have the same similar strategy of my goal is because they have no idea where they're going. It's like when I get into this town, is to go find the movers and shakers who are the most powerful people in the town. And they all end up getting connected wow. to people. And the way they get connected is really, really cool. Oh, I want to watch this. Oh, it's very interesting. I did, they did a, I had no idea about the show. 
And uh, I thought it was such a cool premise, right? Yeah. I so mean, to build, to build, I mean, to build that, any, that's really cool. to build any business that in 90 days is, is, is yeah. you know what I mean? It sounds impossible. Yes. Here's a hundred bucks. Go make a million dollars in 90 days. So, yeah. yeah. You know, what's cool about that is um, uh, if it's real, which it sounds like it is, I think if you watch that, you can realize like there's a lot you can control. Yeah. You know, there definitely is. I mean, I've worked with some very successful people as clients and you do find these, you find that some, some pretty interesting commonalities. And one of them is they're, they're typically very good with people. Mm -hmm. You what, know, one of my favorite parts without like ruining the show, this is just a small part. And the, what made me like Grant Cardone so much, cause I, I know very little about this guy is part of his strategy is to get to a place where he can make two, he set a goal, two to $3,000 in the first week and a half so he can pay for his family to be there because he knows if he's got to grind like this for 90 days oh, wow. that he needs his family. He's never been more than like four days without his kids. Oh, wow. And so he's so determined to hustle up three to five grand so he can then pay for them to come out and stay and be near him so he can finish. The so none of them went to town and bought $100 worth of uh, scratcher tickets? Or Nobody. <laughs> yeah. And, and everybody found a way to... And you, the stuff that some of these CEOs are doing, like this one girl, like she... Find like a hundred dollars will not even get you a night at a motel. No, yeah. like so she found like this like shithole in, and ends up making a deal for one night, and then she ends up. I mean, the place is disgusting. Finds out the guy who's managing it needs like all this help, and decides to like scrub bathrooms, clean kitchen, and just just remodel the place on her free time to get trade for staying in the end. Oh, yeah. So they all use ways like that to leverage like their and the jobs that they're willing to do to make a couple bucks. Like nobody's like complaining that they're getting minimum wage. No one's, they're just, they're doing everything they can right now to just establish a real, and that's where I'm at in the show. Like, so I haven't seen. And it's called Billionaire Undercover. Undercover Billionaire. Undercover Billionaire. Yeah, it's a um, Discovery Plus show. I'm yeah. watching that. Yeah, that's, that's right. That we, sounds really good. We brought up uh, uh, Elon smoking weed. Is it true that the at the federal level they're passing uh, marijuana? The house, the house, the, the house voted to decriminalize uh, marijuana, but I think it still has to go through the Senate, or the Senate yeah. might have shot it down already. At this point, does anybody care? I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's, like, I know. It's ridiculous. The, yeah, it's been out. The I have not, been but out. by the way, that's not legalization. I, I, got, I have cousins. Just decriminalization. Oh, I got cousins yeah. who are like texting, woo, it's going to be legal. <laughs> no, nah, it's not the same, dude. Yeah, no. yeah. It just means it's decriminalized. It doesn't mean it's going to be uh, okay. legalized. But yeah, they need to. They need to decriminalize it, or at least not treat it the way that they treat it, which is ridiculous. I mean, it really is not going to impact anybody at our level who's just a consumer right now. Because right now, almost any state you're in, you can go Yeah, get it goes it. decriminalization, and then if it goes legalization federally, then what you'll see is these established cannabis companies in states where it's legal, like California yeah. versus Washington. Delivery is going to oh, be a they'll, lot more. Then they'll, then they'll start to go... National. Grocery stores, yeah, Safeways, and I mean, that's, that'll yeah. be interesting to see. So that's what I'm most curious to see what happens is like, are, are we going to see in the next few years, you know, you'll national be, brands, just like you yeah. see alcohol and cigarettes at a grocery store. Will you now see a section that's dedicated to like cannabis products and you'll just have to be, I think so. Where I think they'll screw oh, I think up, so too. where I think they'll screw up is they'll tax the shit out of it, mm -hmm. which will keep the black, keep the market, black market vibrant. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's, you know what I, you know, I think that, I think that's the, the, for sure, natural progression anyways. Like they're going to make sure they squeeze every dime they can. And then I think over time, you got to think that they would loosen up on yeah. that. There's a dumb well, strategy. Well, there's still moonshiners that exist, right? Yeah. And, yeah, but And there will like, always be somewhat of a black it's market. It's just like novelty though, yeah. But right now, to Sal's point, which is true, the, the, they, they're taxing it so heavily that if you have a connection to a farmer right now, like if you have a relationship with growers, like it's I don't go to cannabis clubs, dude. The cannabis clubs are so overpriced and it's B grade marijuana that's in there because the guys can still get killer prices on the black market. Yep. So most of these guys that have been doing and girls, whatever, that have been doing this forever are not taking it into cannabis clubs because they can yep. sell it on the black market for a higher price. Yep. Yep. And consumers will pay it because they're I, getting a better quality uh product. Here's what I think. Yeah. I think if it goes national, if the federal if it becomes legal federally Companies like Marlboro or companies that own Marlboro, I forgot what the name was, Altria or something like that. Philip Morris? But no, it's not anymore. So they think they changed the name, but they're, they will crush because they have everything set up already. Yeah. Everything already set they up. Get all the fields and everything. The and they'll just and boom, yeah. jump in and just. In fact, if, if I'm not mistaken, they were already positioning themselves to be ready for something like that to happen because it will so be. So I, I always wonder like, if that's how it's going to happen because. <sighs> 
imagine when like alcohol and I wish I, I remember the history on alcohol better. Like if obviously it wasn't around at the time, but like what companies were already doing it illegally. And then that transition into yeah. going legal yeah. versus other companies that were doing something completely different, but just had a lot of power decide to get into it. Cause that's the one thing that okay, Philip Morris has been doing cigarettes for a long time. Well, growing tobacco and farming tobacco is not the same as farming marijuana. No, but aren't there, there a lot is of a, there commonalities is, though? In not really, the, not really? with it. No, not with a, there's more commonalities with a tomato plant than there are with a, a oh, tobacco plant. So okay. if someone grows tomatoes mm -hmm. and they have a massive tomato farm and then they want to make the switch over to marijuana, they have a better chance of hitting it out the park and Heinz. dominating. I'll call my dad. But yeah. no, he I, grows so because you have to, you have to factor in, there's got to be a growth curve on. Yeah. Now, does that, I mean, they, Philip Morris has the money to go out and buy the best growers and then eventually attract all that. So I, I do believe that th at one point they'll eventually dominate, but do you really think that they'll come out the gates right away and be able to mass produce a better, cheaper version of what's out there? You know, I read some articles on this a while ago. I'm trying to find what company owns them. I guess the manufactured, I guess you're right, Philip Moore still, but I, I, I was, I was reading an article and I can't find it about how they were positioning themselves and what it looked like. And they were saying that they, but you're right. I actually don't know as much as uh, I don't know a whole whole bunch in terms of what that would look like. I think they have the distribution channels. I think that makes a big difference. Yeah, right? and I and I and definitely the connections. I definitely think they're going to go make millions upon billions of dollars doing it. Will that eliminate black market completely or other other producers? I don't know. Like yeah. I think there's going to be a market for connoisseur cannabis still, yeah. and until. And I don't know if Philip Morris will even try and be that. Maybe they'll just look at the bigger pie and go like, listen, we just want to get 80% of everybody. The main, the people that are all let's thinking make, about trying it or they uh, di uh, dabble in it a little bit. Let's make the high volume, high, heavily processed version yeah. of yeah, this. Yeah, exactly. Right. And then there's going to be the people that have sure. something very particular. Oh, yeah. They want organically I mean, you have grown. Your, they want the highest, whatever. You have your Bud Light, right? And then you have your, totally. your expensive IPAs. watered yeah. down version. Yeah. So that, so I, I think it's going to look like that. I think Probably. we're going we're gonna to have some big players like that, but they're going to have a lot of these small smaller IPA, Probably. like locally type of grown yeah. type of stuff. Dude, but. speaking of plants, I read, by the way, I just want everybody to know this, uh, humanprogress.org is a phenomenal site oh, if I you want to read site. really interesting current stuff on science and you know new studies and stuff like that. So they came out, so check this out, right? Uh, on humans, I read this article about uh, trees being genetically modified to capture more carbon in, from the air. Really, really crazy stuff. So they mm. they have a they are able to genetically modify through using genes that you find in algae. They'll put them in trees, and the trees will grow fifty percent faster mm -hmm. and capture far more carbon. What? That's crazy. Far I more love carbon. Actionable out of the things like to this. clean the environment. Isn't that right. That's now, sick. now instead he, of just talking about it, throw money in the air. Yes. Now, what I was thinking, I'm trying to figure out where I, I actually posted it somewhere, but I'm, I'm trying to find the article. One thing that I found that was very interesting is I'm like, okay, how's this going to work? Where are they going to plant them? Like, how's this all going to happen? What they would do, and, and oh, by the way, they were also genetically modifying these trees to not produce pollen because of the fear of contaminating the other trees everywhere else. So you'll own these trees. They'll plant them. Only if you plant them will they be there. So I thought that was pretty fascinating. Huh. But nonetheless, and they're, they're very resilient. They're going to take less water, like all the stuff that they're in. Yeah, how long is their lifespan? Is that- uh, They just grow super just fast. Grow. So you could, they just- produce weight and they live a long time like a normal tree. Huh. So I was reading about like what this business model will look like. And apparently what they were talking about was going to private landowners who would allow them to grow these trees. Then you get what are called carbon credits from the government because it's capturing so much carbon. And then they would share the profits with the landowner. So you own a bunch of land. Yeah. This company comes on, grows all these trees. Wow. Government gives them Brilliant. money and you share it with them. Yeah. It's actually like actionable steps uh, in that direction instead of just taxing us. Wasn't it, um, wasn't it Bill Gates who bought a bunch of uh, land? He did. And he's just sitting on it right now? He did. He bought all kinds. I, that's interesting because I was watching some show and it was um, one of those, uh, oh, you know what it was? Like, um, what do you call those places that um, are like a homestead? You ever heard of homesteads? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there was like these guys that go in and they help these people. Um, improve their homestead and they do all this kind of renovations and stuff. But uh, Vermont w was uh, where they were at. And I didn't realize that like, I guess over the years, like 80% of Vermont is all like forest now. Like it, since there, it's not that highly populated, like there's so many trees that, that grew in that state alone. It's like, it's so much of a, an effect of 
of population, whether or not we have like this dense um, forest in uh, in places like that. Now, do they oh, have things wild. that show like the quality of air and stuff? Over yeah, there like way better. Yeah, of course, right? Yeah, exactly. It's just like it's kind of one of those interesting things. Like if we left, everything else would just uh, flourish. You know? Wow, like, that's why. Yeah, when I was when I was uh, you know about these these trees, my big concern was what if it uh, what if it's so sturdy. And so fast growing that it takes over, <laughs> the you know, it's just like oh, I kills know, right? It's just the uh, yeah, pervasive. But they were they were talking over. again. They were talking about how to prevent you know stuff like that from happening. So I think this is brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. You're growing a tree. Yeah, it's capturing more carbon. They don't die. They don't. They don't produce as many like falling leaves and shit, which so, ends up releasing is more it carbon. A publicly traded company. That's no. the thing. So we have that, and we also, like algae makes a, a huge. Uh, it converts a carbon, doesn't it? And it filters it oh, out yeah, with yeah, your, yeah, for yeah, oxygen. Yeah. So it's like there's simple solutions to all these things. And there's also like, I mean, didn't they develop some kind of bacteria that eats uh, oil in the ocean yeah. for oil spills and things like yeah. that? This just doesn't get like no promoted innova enough. innovation is how we're innovation. Solve. Yeah, isn't that wasn't it Tony who you're we talking to Robbins who said that about how he like for every like. Like he's done the math on yeah. flying his jet or doing those yeah. things. Like what it, he's what it pla planted that many trees to, to, to basically to negate offset the amount. Yeah, yeah. To offset, offset his footprint yeah. footprint. I think that was, I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. It, the, the current tech uh, nuclear uh, power is pretty remarkable. They can actually use the waste from old nuclear power plants as fuel. And they produce a tremendously small amount of, of waste compared to the amount yeah. of power that they produce. But isn't it funny how we're just inundated with, we're just such bad uh, organisms. No, you, you, like, we're listen, doing so much bad I, stuff. There was some, there's this movement. I don't know if it's an actual movement, but I've seen posts about it, about people who are trying to tell other people not to have kids to save the earth. Like who's going to enjoy the earth if there's no one here. <laughs> also, it's also based on a lot of false information. Which For example, the whole like, we're running out of space. Did you guys know that we could take the entire population of earth, the whole population of earth, Put them in Texas, and we would have population density yeah. of New York City. We don't have a population problem. That's true. Density. Yes. That's yes. Whoa, true. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That can't be right. That's 100% true. The in, you could take the entire population of the world, put, yes. it in, put, put them, it in them all the way into Texas. You don't realize how big Texas and it would, is. And it would, be, it would have the, the population density of New York City. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. That's a crazy stat. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah that yeah. is a crazy stat. We also have more oil available to us yeah. today than we did in the 70s or, or even 60s. Why? Because the new technologies of reaching that oil. So mm -hmm. they actually, scientists thought we were going to reach what was called peak oil in the 1980s, meaning the amount of oil we're going to produce, yeah, we're going to the cost was going to offset the energy and all, whatever. But because of modern technology like fracking, um, they're able to access more oil. So just it's this is all, not, not saying it's perfect, but when you go on that website, it breaks things down and you can start to see like, That's okay. why I love that website. Yeah, it's like what what is actually happening and what kind of advances, plus, innovations are out there. Plus, it's a good news site. Every yes. other site's a bad Positive. news site. <laughs> Everything's bad news, man. Dude, I'm still tripping out on the whole world can fit in Texas. That's yeah. wild. Yeah, you dude. think like China and India alone, like that'd be impossible, right? Yes. Yeah. No, and then to think that it would just be as populated as New York City is. Yeah. That is crazy. Crazy. Well, the vast majority of, of the population in most countries is concentrated into very yeah. small areas. America is a very, generally, we have big metropolitan areas, but generally speaking, we have very, it's like- there's very wide. Yeah, there's so much yeah. space. So much land, there. wide open land. Well, yeah. that, and that completely highlights how yes. crazy it is. I would have never guessed it's even closer. I to know. That would have been a great trivia question. I, right there. I know. I should have kept uh. it that way. <laughs> anyway, speaking of good news- Magic Spoon has a new flavor. Yeah. I saw Doug. Doug. I tried I saw it. Doug. I like it. Doug was munching on it. What is it? It's honey nut? Yeah. Oh. Honey nut. What does oh, it man. taste like? Uh, well, it tastes, nuts. I don't know if it tastes like any other cereal I've had, but it definitely has a honey flavor. Have so, you ever had, have you obviously had Honey Nut Cheerios? It's have been had, so many years. Have you ever I had the honeycomb, honeycomb? Yeah, honey, honey, it looks like honeycomb it's to me. It's kind of like, it reminds me of that a little Okay, bit. that's yeah. what I thought it would be like. I was, oh, Doug, put the box in the frame. I want people okay, to see. Okay, yeah. there you are. And the reason why I want people to see is because Magic Spoon, whoever designs their <laughs> They have like boxes, psychedelic. They're on mushrooms yeah. or something like that there's always like uh, somebody writing something weird yeah like yeah, yeah. <laughs> this explorer writing a b yeah <laughs> i've ever i've actually never asked them i appreciate where, why. that though why, why that why do they why do they why do they make them like Dude, that? because uh, think about all those like it's sa cereal. saturday sunday morning yeah um yeah the, those type of sugar cereals they always have these wild psychedelic toucan and uh yep. rabbits and yeah unicorn whatever the fuck Bro, you know, hey like doug, a, doug read off the macros again on that 
uh, for me? What is it? What's the serving size and what are the macros on it? Yes, there? one cup, 140 calories. Count chocula. Seven grams total fat, uh, 14 grams carbs, of which one is a one gram of sugar, and 13 grams of protein. For a cup of cereal. For a cup of cereal. 13 grams yeah. of protein. Yeah, I see you, Whey protein. I see you eat it dry a lot. Is that how you normally do it? No. So today I didn't bring a lunch. Oh. I, <laughs> I completely forgot to bring a lunch. Well, I just didn't take the time to make it. So this is my go-to, you know, if I can't uh, get food easily. So rather than go to a restaurant and get something I don't I end up eating too you much know, of. Yeah. When I was a kid, I thought that. I thought I discovered a secret when I ate dry cereal for the first time watching TV. I'm not a dry I was like, cereal guy. this is a snack too. <laughs> I don't need milk for this. And I just sit there with my hand in the box, you know? I love yeah. dry cereal. Yeah, I know. My mom would be I like, like it with milk too much. Man. Throw some milk in there. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Did you guys see... Um, this weekend was the uh, WWE with WrestleMania, right? I th I, heard, I thought I heard it. Andrew, did you say you watched it with your boy? Yeah. Uh, was that the first time you watched WrestleMania with him? No. Oh, he's watched it before? Yeah. I saw, is that the one where Ronda Rousey came out to and, and lifted Triple H in the air? I didn't watch that part. Okay. So She's strong as shit to do that, by the way. That's, that's a big dude. dude. And she literally- Logan Paul character. made an appearance. Was he impressive? Yes. Oh wow. Look at his clip, Doug. If you go to his Instagram, he did a Man. he did a little 15, 20 second clip of his match and for sure practiced for a while to get to the yeah. to get to yeah, he looked great, dude. He's winning me over. I I, 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 I don't know the guy, so he's probably I don't know if he's a dick or whatever. I like but him. I like him, man. He's doing, what are they not getting their hands? That's in? why I like him. That's what I'm saying. Bro, he his his new drink or whatever, what the prime or whatever it is, he he got he partnered up with WWE. Is so, it an energy drink? Wow. Uh, I don't, it's like a, um, I think it's like a, a low cal or no cal type of drink, like hydration drink. So I think it's okay. like a, uh, like, like a Gatorade, but yeah, like yeah. no cal, I think, right? Is that right? Okay. Thank oh, you. Okay. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just oh, guessing right oh, now. Oh, there he is right there. And, oh, with the WWE suplex. Wow. That's pretty good. Who's he fighting there? Dude, he, he did a stereo. He, he got off the ropes. He did. So he now did wasn't he a wrestler in high school? Yeah. Yeah. So he's, yeah. So he's, he knows how to grapple, but it doesn't matter. I mean, this is. Yeah, you no, can tell I mean, that these are WWE moves, and he obviously practiced them. Yeah, you, there's there's some pictures of him jumping in the air, jumping over the dude's oh, head, yeah, look at that. and doing the splits. He jumped off the ropes, like, and he know? acts. <laughs> yeah, he knows how to act. Wow, good for it's him. It's Like a natural fit for him. Yeah, yeah. dude, this this guy's so not going. Away. He's not going away. That's what I'm saying. Oh, and he's only he just turned like 27. Did he really? Yeah, he's 27 years old, man. Oh, man. I, I mean, I don't know what his, him and his brother's net worth are up to, but boy, you know, before 30 years old, these guys are in, in route to be, you know, billionaires. He's not dude. going away. He, no. He's, already, he's made a lot of no. smart decisions at this point. At first, I thought it was like one of those flash in the pan, you know, yeah. social media, whatever, but no. They, you see his Pokemon, his Pokemon card that he has? No. You know the worth on that thing? No, how much? So it's 5.5 million? Shut your face. Yeah. For a <laughs> card? For a Pokemon card. No way. So it's a, it's a, it's like the rarest Pokemon card that exists. There's only like 34 in the world and there's the only one 10 mint or mint 10. I don't know the order I'm supposed to say that in, right? The per, a perfect car with no it's it, it, completely like no indentions, no scuffs, centered, perfect, whatever. That's what a perfect. 10. How much did he buy it for? So he paid five million. For no, it. he didn't. Yes. Wow. wow. Yeah, he paid five point four million. I think is what he paid for. I have no idea what it supposedly is. Can you imagine for. writing a check for five million dollars for, for a, a Pokemon? Po Pokemon <laughs> of all cards. Yeah, it's like come on. Yeah, oh. it made it. It made it in the Guinness World Record. I think it's like one of the most expensive cards ever even purchased. I just what a what a was crazy he the one? Did he get burned uh, on another one that was inauthenticated or oh, like yeah. it was on a, a box? He bought a bunch okay, of them. So I heard that was I heard that was fake. So is that okay? Yeah, I don't know if it's true. Yeah, stage. Yeah, was that's what I heard too. That it was staged. just yeah. to hype it up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that was. I think that was all part of his thing to hype this up was to show that he got screwed by like. And I think he paid for that. By the way, I think it was like two million dollars or something like that. Oh, oh, you know what? I forgot to tell you guys. Did you guys hear about what the the automakers that agreed to end car sale, uh, gas car sales? Yeah, they, the GM did it, and so Ford, did, GM, yeah. Mercedes Benz. And some others. That's why I was so hard up on the Cadillac. Yeah. Exactly. Because Two, it's a, it'll be the last, the last it'll be the last speed. gas powered supercharged V8 engine that the GM GM makes. So here's all of them. It's Ford, Crazy. GM, Mercedes, Volvo, Jaguar, uh, Land Rover, and then a Chinese automaker. They're gonna they're gonna eliminate gas car sales globally by twenty forty. So by I know I know it's better for the earth and i know that is these, it though they may yeah, i know right so yeah, let's look at the data 
I just so I sent you guys. Did you guys watch that video I sent of the the electric truck that smoked the Raptor and the? Oh, um, uh, well, dude, that's the thing. I mean, the torque and the they're fast. Dude. They're Come so on, fast. Teslas they're, they're are ridiculously and fast. strong. Insanely I mean, fast. they the the second clip they it's pulled a it's they power. pulled a boat. They pulled a boat and beat a Ford yeah. Raptor. That is crazy. It's, you don't need to wait to build or no. Ford Lightning. Power. Excuse me. The it's Raptor in, is the it's electric the, combustion it's takes power. a bit. Yeah, no, this is instantaneous. Yeah, right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, you guys have been in a Tesla a fast. Have you guys been in the plat? Yeah, they do the yeah. Plat or whatever. Speed or have whatever. you done that? Yeah. You're stuck to your seat. You're stuck. Yeah, but it doesn't have the same sound. Mm, you it's know, the like, sound and the no feel. The we're old guys, bro. Our, our kids are going to grow oh, up. I like the care. smell and the sound and the rumbling, dude. It's just like, <laughs> you know, like, how are you going to get excited about that? <laughs> <That's> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like we, oh, you hey. know, like a cool, but it's not. It's not fucking something with balls. Hey, our kids, our kids are gonna, and their kids are gonna make fun of us. Like, oh god, they will. The car's <laughs> so loud. Oh, like, it oh, smells. You smell. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's grandpa. Oh, oh, I love you it. Know, it's just, just like ten years ago, yeah. the the you still can make fun of the electric cars because the the gas powered monsters would smoke them, but it's. Flipped completely. Yeah. Like now you have these like little electric cars. Here that comes are, Grandpa Justin just killing shit. more polar bears in his fucking truck. God damn. Get in their little Prius. Yeah. <laughs> no. I'm like, fuck you. They're fast, yeah. dude. Yeah. It's because we grew up with cars being a particular. You know how long it, can I tell you something? It took me so long to accept driving a sports car that's not stick shift. I hated that. I'm like, oh, why would you buy a sports car that's stick shift? I love stick now, shift. Now, I, I, I accept it now because you can't find any that are stick shift. No, nobody so, can drive them. It's it's the best uh, uh, car theft insurance, right? Like, yeah. If you get a manual transmission. Say. It's totally true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my, my, my sister's boyfriend's a police officer, and he goes, oh, yeah, dude. Because if you have a stick, you can leave the cars open. No one's going to take your car. <laughs> Got to have one of those in San Francisco. Nobody. Sure. If someone steals it, too, we know. Oh, it's... 50 year old perp. Yeah, let's go yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we gotta go exactly. find the 50 year old car thief. You know, it's going Narrows on. Narrows it down. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of aging, so, uh, so I have, you know, I'm trying to like work through this aging process when I work out and be smart with my exercise and my nutrition and whatever. You guys know I dropped my calories because I just over 210 for me just isn't comfortable. Yeah, you're. It's, you're hossing I, it. I just, there. it just, I, I was pushing my, my gut health was good. So I was pushing my weight and I was excited about that. But then my sleep was crap and I was snoring and was pissing off my wife and just didn't feel comfortable. So I cut calories and I've been uh, doing a few things with supplements to kind of offset some of that stuff. And you guys know I've been mixing the uh, Organifi green juice with the red juice. So I used to call that the Christmas blend, right? Mm -hmm. I mix that. I've been drinking that pretty regularly. And I do notice a difference in my uh, joints when I drink it on a regular basis. And I drink it during my workout. So I have it during my workout because the, the red juice has got some... Some stuff that'll give you a little bit of energy. It's not really stimulant. But I do notice my joints are a little bit better when I take it. And I haven't I, taken it this consistency. I actually felt really the other huh, day you you accidentally stole my water bottle and put your shit in my water bottle. <laughs> no, I did. But I actually did enjoy the drink. It was actually kind of a good mix you did. You did the I think the red juice, yeah. the LMNT. Is yeah. that what, you, what yeah. else is that it? That's it. Uh, that was a good little mix. What yeah. flavors did you do to make it taste like that? It, that was it. No, what flavor? Oh, oh watermelon element, element. Oh, so it was watermelon, watermelon, and then the and red, the red ju juice. Yeah. yeah, it ended up being. You were so mad. I, was, I accidentally got his cup. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not like, bro. It was our our nice aluminum bottle, it mirror bottle, almost like mine. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only have stickers on mine, so you know it's mine. I know. So dude, he, I don't he, know why. But I don't I put. I don't put any. Doesn't pay attention. I don't do details, any fruity, yeah, yeah. sweet taste in anything in those because I want it to be fresh for the water, and sure. I'm so paranoid about it tasting off. Like but that's then, why I will never do shakes. But then you drink it, and then that, later well, on the, you're like, the drink was good. My veins are. Busting out, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. I've sexy. actually always, I really do enjoy the the red juice. It gives me a a really, it's not a stimulant like no, like a pre workout. No, it's, it's got an, it's got adaptogens in it, so it's different kind of energy. Yeah, it is different. It's it, and if you were to compare it to that, you just you're not going to feel the same thing. No, that's but why I you, that's why good. I combine it with caffeine. You know, I throw the stimulants. You know, when I I find myself using it is when I when I need a little bit of pick me up, but then I'm I'm doing a later in the afternoon workout. Yes, because I do not want to use great idea afternoon. If I'm working out at two, three, or four o'clock in the afternoon, there is no way I'm doing like a Legion pre workout or any other uh, yeah. pre workout. Too strong. Too strong, yeah, and I'm yeah. not going to sleep, sleep well that night. But I can do the red juice. Yes. I can do the red juice. It'll give me a little bit of an energy. I'll feel good afterwards, and then I still can come down for sleeping. So I combine, That's how I use I it. I combine it with caffeine, but if I'm going off caffeine, I take it by itself, and it takes the edge off. Because you know what it's like going off caffeine? It's a yeah. terrible. So like, I'm like, all right, do I go cold turkey or I. 
yeah. slowly go. And I have right now I'm having to try to cut it back because my, my milligrams are getting too high and the red juice takes the edge off. Otherwise, you know, you know how it is. It's like a week of just, you just feel like dog shit. Hey, real quick, you got to head over to mindpumppartners.com. Check out Live On Labs. They make nutrients with very, very effective delivery methods. Okay. They use liposomal technology. One of my favorite products is their glutathione. Normally, if you take glutathione, you just don't, you just don't absorb much of it. But with their liposomal technology, it's proven to increase glutathione levels in your liver and in your body. That's the master antioxidant. They have many other products. Uh, they have a vitamin C product, a B complex, and much more. In fact, right now, if you get the B complex and the vitamin C and you bundle them together, they'll send you free uh, li the free liposomal glutathione. So go check them out. Again, click on uh, Mind Pump Partners, click on uh, Live On Labs, and then use the code. Actually, there is no code. They already give you a discount. Isn't that cool? Go check that out. All right, here comes the rest of the show. First question is from Class A Fit Viking Shit. Whoa. Oh, hey. <laughs> like I, guess, I guess it's SHT at the end. What are some exercises that can build a thicker neck? A neck. You know why I picked this question? Dick neck. Because I, there were literally three people asked the same question. And this question always pops up every time we post on our Instagram, like, you know, how to get a bigger neck. And we never really talk about it. Mm. So, and I'm sure there's not a lot of people interested in building a thicker neck. However, in some sports, a strong neck is extremely important. Football is probably yes. the most common one. Yep. If you're a grappler, it's very important. And then if you build a lot of muscle, I've seen this before with dudes where they build like big chest, back and shoulders and have this little skinny neck. It looks really weird. Yeah. So I think there's an aesthetic component too that goes with it a little <laughs> bit. But building the neck is actually rather simple. It's a, It actually responds tremendously fast to resistance training, like really fast. Like if you strengthen your neck, you'll notice the muscle gain pretty quick on there. Some of the most basic exercises are literally you lay on a bench with your head kind of hanging off the bench and you do chin to chest. That's one. You lay on your side, ear to shoulder is another one. And then you lay on your stomach and then you go in the opposite direction and a very basic exercise. I think you should dress though. For, I think there is a, a misconception to building the neck though, because I think there is direct building the neck and then there's muscles that support the neck that people would sure. categorize as a thicker neck or building a like neck. Like traps. Yeah, yeah, yes. Traps get bigger. It makes your neck look like. Yeah. Thicker. I think, and I, and I think that's what m most people that want to build, unless you're those sports, right? Cause yeah. you're right. Wrestling and football. Uh, and that's very sport specific. Boxing you're, you're, is another one. Oh, yeah. uh, that's a good point. Those there's a, there's more than that even. There's yeah. a handful of sports where having a very strong neck yeah. makes sense, but that's not somebody who wants to to look like a thicker neck or whatever. The people that I think that are like trying to look like they have a thicker neck, that's more traps. I would say that uh, trap development that is going to give you that aesthetic, aesthetically looking thick neck. Yeah, don't you think? I, I mean, well, yeah. I, when they say neck, I think neck because. I mean, it's it was on our Instagram, and people will typically say traps. Mm -hmm. I, but yeah, the average person, when someone has big traps, the average person goes, they have a big neck. But it's just the traps. And that's, I mean, that's, you know, farmer carries right. and shrugs and cleans. That's a big part of the support system, though. Yeah. I mean, in in terms of what we did in football, I mean, we did a lot of isometrics for neck, yes. which I feel like is probably the safest approach because – I don't know. I get a little weary when people start trying to train their neck with weights uh, because they can overdo it and it can be real problematic. I'm glad you said that. Do not add resistance until you're already really good and really strong. Yeah. So, and you don't need resistance. Look, I tell you what, you take the average person, have them hang their head off a bench and do chin to, chin to chest. 20 reps and they're on fire. They can't do anymore. Yeah, and I mean, we would be in quadruped and, and one person would be kind of, you know, placing their hand in a position yeah. where they, they'd push against it and they would resist it, you know, up, down, and like basically, you know, the, the, the main movements uh, that you're going to be responsible with your neck. And then um, one product that's out there now that I do – I think has some promise in this direction was the halo. You guys have seen that it yeah. goes around your head and, and it actually clips onto a rubber band and then you can go through a lot of the uh, neck rotations and yeah. things with resistance. That's good resistance. So there's yeah. a way to do it. We used to just use a hand towel. Yep. You yeah. use a hand That'll towel like this too. and then, you know, holding it against guys driving this way, hold it yep. down this way, guys lifting up, hold down. Isometrics go, are great for now. Yeah. And then it's just, you, you, you're you doing isometrics on it. That's what we used to. I just really think that someone who asked this, I think are looking for the way it looks and you can get a strong neck by doing all these things we're talking about, but 
nothing is going to make the the neck area look thicker than building traps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like building your traps up is going to give you a that will do it. But let me tell you, you get a thick neck. You ever look at pictures of of Mike Tyson when he was yeah. a kid? He did so many neck exercises. So. He was a boxer that understood in the early days. And a big neck. Yeah, he, they underst he understood if I have a strong neck, I'm harder to knock out because I'm going to get less snap, right, right, to my head when somebody hits me. And there's pictures of him when he's 18 and his neck is like this big. It's yeah. bigger than his, than his face. Uh, I used to do, in, in, in grappling, we used to do things like neck bridges and all the oh, old right. school right. wrestling exercises. But again, you know, I, I caution people to use resistance because – like this, it's part of your spine. So people don't, the spine goes all the way up. And if you train end range of motion and the re end range of motion for you is what your spine can handle, you're going to cause problems. Yeah. It should be what the muscles can necessarily handle, not necessarily what the, when the, when the, the, you know, the segments of the, of the joints of the neck don't let you go any further. And some people will do that with resistance and then you can get some issues. This kind of goes into some of the old timey lists. I pay attention to a lot of these, these guys that, um, they, they get back to like what uh, old strong men used to do. And so there's some with, with chains and like a, a bit that you basically yeah. bite onto and you do dead lifts with your, uh, with your neck. And what? Uh, yeah, yeah that's old school. Strong it's, man. it's crazy, but it, it makes sense. I mean, in terms of like, also like really strengthening your jaw and your neck all at the same time, it's like, you, you know, know, there's a connection there, right? There's a synergistic action there where in fact, when you're doing uh neck exercises, you want to close your jaw and you want to press your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And mm -hmm. there's muscles that get activated that it's help. It's all with, connected there. It's, yeah. uh, it's interesting. Like if you, if you get to that level of, of a uh, specification, not yeah. just like your major muscle groups, mm -hmm. like you get to the nuances, it all helps and contributes. Now I imagine you guys would never do this unless it was very specific, right? It'd have yeah, to be a client. That I really only ever did neck specific exercises with wrestlers, jujitsu guys, uh, football players. I never did them with anybody unless there was like a specific, I got a physical therapist to tell me do this exercise with them for their neck. Otherwise I, you know, we're okay for the most part. Um, but I mean like football alone, like wear a helmet. People don't realize yeah, you build, put a football helmet on that. and wear it for three hours and then, Take, just wear it. Just wear it for three hours. Take it off. Your neck's sore as hell the next day. Yeah, yeah. You're not used to carrying I it. I actually, even the the few athletes that I did train, um, I didn't even mess with exercises like that. It, just, there was, it wasn't on the hierarchy of things I needed yeah. to do with them. It wasn't even up there like, hey, we need to definitely work on your neck. It was like, there's so many other things that I need to work crunches, on with them. Yeah. It's like that. Well, I, you know, we never even crossed that. So Most I, people, I don't think I trained that with any clients. I did it with my buddies that were into football and helping them yeah. out. But I never trained a client. On yeah, if, if you're just that. trying to get a bigger neck to look better or whatever, uh, and it's no resistance. Just hang off the edge of the bench. Do it like that. That's all you need. And in my experience, again, uh, the neck responds very quickly. It seems to have muscles that hypertrophy very quickly, you know, uh, in relation to other areas. Next question is from Dam. Look at her fat ass. Four twenty. <laughs> Who picked what the is going names? on? I, know the names I didn't are... pick that for the name, by the way. That's the question. <laughs> I don't know. Suspect right now. I yeah, think. for sure. <laughs> 420 it ends with. Uh, it's like a 13-year-old kid that wrote that yeah, out. Exactly. Are there advantages to sometimes, but not often, going to technical or even muscular failure? Yeah, there is. Uh, I rarely recommend it, though, because uh, people have a tough time with failing and their form not going to crap. Also, wait, wait, it's super explain, intense. Explain this question because it's worded a little. I, I don't, In other words, are there advantages to going to failure, technical failure, sometimes? Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And Very I, rarely. Yeah, and I would say there are ways to program it in. And in fact, I've been experimenting quite a bit, and it's too early for me to comment on what I'm finding with programming with this. But train to failure, first off, you got to make sure your form's perfect always. It's a higher risk because as you're – as you fail, your form wants to go down yeah. immediately. But but it is a very fast way to gain strength and muscle. And now I, I hate saying that because some people now watching this are like, cool, I'm going to go do that. You'll, you're going to overtrain real fast because it fries the shit out of your body more than anything else. I mean, I could do you know 15 sets for a body part or I could do two sets to failure and the fatigue you get from real failure is on a whole another level. But it does, there are some... If you program it right, there are some interesting uh, effects, including muscle building uh, and strength gaining. Because it's more high risk, I mean, these are usually techniques we save for advanced lifters. So mm -hmm. I, I don't really even, I mean, I don't even think about it otherwise unless I have 
athletes that specifically want to test out for something or I want to test them out on something very specifically just to see how well mm -hmm. the programming is going uh, because they're going to be testing their body to the limits as they perform. Uh, but otherwise, for me, it there's just so much more value in not going to failure and continually progressing yeah. that why would I interrupt that process? It's it's because we still measure the success of the workout by the soreness. Yeah. And it is a great way to get really fucking sore. If and so I think that's I mean, I as a young as a young kid and an early trainer, I used to train a failure all the time. Yeah, same here. And now it's I can't even tell you the last time I did a set or an exercise to yeah. failure. And I know you're programming it right now and playing with it, but I, it's you very. You have to be very specific with it, and you have to be very judicious with it. And I'm finding that there's a specific way to do it, where it'll work. Because very quickly does it fry your body. Very quickly. I just I answered a question on my my uh, live questions or like that the other day about this, and just said you could literally build the most amazing physique and never once train to failure. True. Yeah. You could build Agreed. the most amazing Easily. physique and never once Agreed. go to failure. It's just. For most people, uh, and, and that's including advanced people. So even if you're advanced, I think it's it's a good it's a good principle to try and train by because it, it most people overuse it. They it's do. like it's yeah. like having a crazy amount of horsepower in a vehicle and you know taking and throttling it down in the corner. It's like you you do, you are better off going into that corner slow and taking it. And yes, because you have an extra hundred horsepower, you could be using to get you through that. You step on it, and you're more likely to spin out. So yeah. you're better off taking it slow and coming out the other end. Yeah, no, I know. I've been experimenting with some programming with myself. Um, I've had, had Doug uh, experiment with some of it. Um, Andrew, Doug, you notice the same thing: very fast strength yeah. and muscle gains, mm -hmm. but there's limitations. Oh, very much so. Yeah. You have to be very careful with it. Definitely. And that's the thing. Like, first off, going to failure, you have to, there's more skill involved. It's not just the technique. Yes, the form and technique need to be perfect. So you need to know how to fail with perfect technique, which is a totally different mindset. You also, number two, it failures a lot further than you think, especially with compound lifts. You're like, oh, I don't know if I could do another one. Oh shit, I can't, I don't know if I could do it. And you do another one. Failure is usually like three or four reps further sometimes on some of these lifts. But also, here's a big one. You need to know how to dump the weight or the bar or how to do it safely. Yes. And a lot of people do not know how to do that. I've seen people get pinned under bars because they never practiced what happens if I can't get up with this oh, weight. Oh, I forgot about that until I was like testing out some high school kids. I'm like, okay, we're going to spend time just showing you how to dump the bar. Yes. How to, how to be able to get out of a hairy situation because I people just don't – they don't get educated on, on, you know, how to fail properly, which is a huge part of it. If you're going to test yourself to totally. that limit. Next question is from rich. Aha BB. What's the best way to keep your butt from shooting up on deadlifts? You know, one of the best, now this is a training issue and you can train, um, your body in a way to, to strengthen that bottom position. But one of the best cues I ever gave someone to help them with this was rather than lifting the bar, I told someone to, Imagine they're pushing their feet through the floor. Yeah. And that it's all about helped, driving your feet. That helped a lot. Because I think when you're just trying to lift, the butt comes up and then versus pushing the feet through and it keeps you more grounded. And that cue has has worked pretty well for me with with clients. So I, I think the the problem is you got to get the hamstrings tight. So when you get somebody who their their butt lifts up like that, they're loose. Mm. They're still loose and they're trying to pick the bar up yeah. to kind of your point. And the, the hips just naturally rise right up. But if you, so I like to get somebody and and have them slide their hips back until they feel their hamstrings super, super tight. And then they're leaning over to grab the bar. And then they're actually thinking about, you say drive to the floor. I think about I'm thrusting my hips forward sure. and it's like a lever. But if you're, if you haven't got that ham, the hamstring really tight, so the hips are sitting back here. And if they are at all, if they're, if this is loose then and, the, and then you go to lift the bar up, then you have this kind of like, Ass goes up first, then the then it gets yeah. tight, and then you pull up. Versus, I load them by sliding them back. Hamstring gets really tight. Then you grab the arms, make sure the arms are really tight, and then all I'm thinking about is those hips coming forward, not trying to lift the bar up. I think the people squatting that that squat down to grab the bar in the deadlift position, that's where you get in this yeah. position. And I also yeah. think uh, take the slack off the bar helps with that. Yeah. Yes. So rather than what that means is like if you're down for the deadlift, you're 
pulling on it enough to where you feel the bar is going to, is giving you a little tightness. Then you get in position. So there's already some tension there yeah. rather than having zero tension, then go right into the You're lift. already lifting without anything coming off the ground yet. Yes. It, it, yeah. I, that, that's kind of how I've been trying to help cue. And um, what I've noticed is, is the ones where I'll, I'll see the butt kind of travel up a bit, um, you know, unnaturally, like they're, they're trying to, rip with their upper body yeah, yeah trying, trying to bar. rip it yeah and so just to, to really focus on the legs driving everything up and like smashing those feet yeah down. what you want to do you get down you get in your position you take the slack off the bar activate your lats in other words you're mm, you're tightening you're pulling the shoulder down activating the lats a little bit of slack and then think push my legs through the floor that usually does it now if you get stuck and your hips still rise go lighter Go lighter and don't allow your butt to lift until the bar starts to come off the floor. And so you might have to slow the rep down. You might have to go much lighter to get that because it's a bad habit to break. Some people deadlift like that so often well, that they don't feel comfortable unless their butt the comes other up. Thing, yeah, I try to get them to, to look facing out to first before yeah. we go, right? This is a lot of times looking down and then not noticing that their their butt's already coming up. Yeah, this is kind of hard to articulate this on a podcast because there's so many moving parts here. Yeah, but yeah. The, the secret is to to be locked and stiff everywhere. Tight. Yep. Yeah. If you're if you're loose at all is when you're going to see movement like this. And the muscle that I think that needs to be tight in this situation is the hamstrings. Mm -hmm. You need to be so you need to be sat back and your hips need to be up high enough already that you can feel tension on the hams. You should feel kind of a stretch on your hamstrings and into the glute already before you're even pulling up. And then you, like your point, take the slack out of the bar. So your arms are yeah. stiff and rigid. And then at that point, everything is stiff and rigid. And then all you're thinking about is thrusting the hips forward and that'll pull that yeah. bar up. If you're loose in the hips at all, then the natural thing is to go up. Yeah. I had a client once where this was just an issue, an issue and we would go lighter. And then anytime we go heavier, it would start happening. So I switched them to trap bar deadlifts and mm -hmm. trap bar is it's easier to stay low with the butt. The, the weight is, you know, you're holding the handles next to your, your legs rather than in front of you. squatted position a little bit better. Yes. And then we practiced, we got good with the trap bar. Then we went to the straight bar and then we fixed uh, the issues. That's another thing you can, you can try to do. Next question is from Landy Dion. Thoughts on bod bodybuilding and building muscle on a keto diet. It's possible, but not desirable. Not a fan. Very, very hard to do. I, you know, I've tried... Yeah, I've, I've eaten a, a rough I've, one. I've go on and off keto diets a lot. Haven't done really a strict one in a long time. It's really hard to eat enough calories to bulk on keto. It's like so satiating and I get so like, oh, I end up eating tons of like avocados and, you know, like just lots of fat to try to get those calories up there. And I've done it and studies will show that you can build muscle doing it. But it's just, it's hard to digest all of that. And it's very, very satiating. It's real tough. Listen, bu building muscle is already really hard. Yeah, Trying to true. do it to fit in a very specific diet. I don't care if it's keto or vegan or paleo. It, or yeah, paleo. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Like giving yourself even more restrictions to do something that is already difficult is just not a fan. That's my thoughts on it. And they go, and it's. Uh, not just keto. I remember when we were when, so limited. Yeah. I remember when we were messing with it, Adam. And yeah. at, back then you were. You I was were, all bodybuildered out at that time. Yeah. And, and I, I remember you eating. You were like, dude, I have to eat like, like how many grams of fat? You're like, I have to eat like 200 or 300 grams of fat just to do yeah. this. And I was eating. I, I was like, this can't be good. All I'm, I'm eating butter and avocado all day long yeah. and, and <laughs> macadamia nuts just so I could get to my calorie intake in order to bulk yeah because at that time I, my maintenance calories were like around 4,000 4,500 and to bulk I need to be at 5,000 and when I have this very limited menu to choose from yep. I found myself just like eating chunks of butter or eating just avocado after avocado or things of mac I'm like this is not ideal like why now and that by the way I didn't do that like intentionally I'm going to try and bulk on keto we were all just in the middle of our training careers, wherever everybody was at, and we were talking about keto. We were just experimenting. And we so were yeah. experimenting with keto, and that was my critique. I'd come back to the guys and be like, man, this for leaning out, I think this diet's not bad because, again, it's a restrictive diet, so you're restricting down to only a few things you can have. And so for someone who's trying to cut, mm -hmm. not a bad strategy to use this diet. But for someone who's trying to bulk and build muscle, yeah. I mean, to limit your menu is only going to make it that much yeah. more difficult. Plus, plus ketosis reduces anaerobic power. This is, this is a fact, okay? So studies show this. You're not going to be as strong 
with heavy lifts. Now, you can still have lots of stamina, low-end stamina. There's studies that show that people on ketogenic diets are fine. In fact, they might even be great at just long-distance, low-intensity type uh, activity. But when it comes to strength or power, there's a clear drop-off when you are in ketosis. And if you're trying to build muscle, you kind of want that, right? You yeah. want that strength. You want that pump, right? It's also hard to get a pump on ketosis. So I, I don't think it's a great bulking diet at all. Now, yeah. who's it good for? It would be good for the person who has to eat keto yeah. for whatever medical reason or whatever. Fat adapted aerobic athletes. Yeah. You know, I've seen that work for them, but it takes a long time to get fat adapted and really uh, be able to shuttle and use that as, as fuel. So it's, it's, Again, it's it's a difficult one to do anything performance wise or gaining muscle wise. It's very difficult. Totally. Look, if you like our information, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness or health goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. You can find Adam on Instagram at mindpumpadam, and you can find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal. <laughs> 